Hi everyone, in this video, I'm gonna explain how to build a control chart in Power BI step-by-step. Step. It took me almost an hour to build the logic functions in the chart. So to keep the video short, I'll not go through the statistical details, but the focus would be more on execution in Power BI. I have classified the entire exercise into four steps on the part one being the building measures for control chart. And the second one is building the line chart building the logic for various rules. And part four is tweaking the markers to highlight the rules. So without wasting our time, let's quickly move to PBX file and then start to build the measures. So here is the file. And before we start to build the measure, I just want to show you the data. So I have just one table. So I have the days, failures, and production line. So I have two processes here, process one and process two. Now as a first step, I need to build my measure that is required for a control chart. So I, let me start with the, the first measure, F underscore current, which is nothing but the sum of the failures. The next measure is I need to have the mean to build my control chart. So I have calculated the mean here. The next step is to have the standard deviation. So if you see here, I have the standard deviation calculated. So I have the standard deviation. And then once I have the standard deviation, I can build the upper control limit and lower control limit. So as you can see here, I have uh, one sigma line here. So mean plus my standard deviation, and then two sigma mean plus two times my standard deviation, and three sigma mean plus three times my standard deviation. Same thing goes for the uh, lower control limit. So I have uh, mean minus three times my standard deviation, and two sigma, that is mean minus two times my standard deviation and one sigma mean minus standard deviation. So once I have this, I have almost uh, everything that is required to create a basic control chart. So if I hover over this table, you can see I have the first measure which I've built, I have the mean, I have the standard deviation and all the uh, control limit, upper and the lower control limit. So if you just place these measures in this uh, line chart here. So I have the day in the axis and then the first measure which we built, the mean and all the upper control limit and lower control limit. So I get a, uh, a line chart, right? And then uh, I can go to the uh, uh, format tab and then I can change the colors according to my wish. So if you see here, if I expand this line, I can uh, color code this based on my wish. So if you see here, I have the dash type and then I can choose my color. So I have selected the following colors here. So for the measure, I have selected black for the central line that is mean, uh, light gray and various other colors. So I'll not go into cosmetic details here. So once we have the basic control chart ready, the next step would be to build these rules. So if you have a requirement saying from the business saying, okay, whenever a particular rule is breached, you need to color code that using some markers. So this is gonna be a little lengthy process. So how do I do that? As a first step, I need to create one measure called as day value. So if you see here, I have created a measure, which is nothing but the maximum of day. And the next step is to create a rank function. So I have created a new measure, which is called as rank. So I have used the rank X function, and then I'm sorting it based on the day value, a measure which we just created in ascending order. So I get the rank. And I'm using this rank to do a relative reference while doing a row comparison. If I do an absolute uh, comparison using a day minus one or day minus two, if there is a particular day that is missing in your data, you would be referencing a wrong record. So that's the reason I'm building this relative referencing. And also if you want to get into details, I have a separate video. So you can check out my previous video. So once I have this rank, I need to build the uh, row referencing to do a comparison between uh, current row minus previous row or current row minus two rows behind, etc. Right, and so that's the reason I'm using this rank function. So when I click on this uh, this particular rec uh, measure here, if I expand this, you can see I'm passing the rank which I've just created to this variable and then filtering my data based on 
this uh, variable minus one to get the previous record for this failure. So if you see here, if I go back to the table here, so let me click on this. So if you see here, current minus one. So basically this current row 11, yeah, I'm getting uh, 11. So one row behind is 12, so I'm getting 12. Same thing goes for this 15, one row behind is 11 and I'm getting it here. So if you see here, these are the values. So these are pretty straightforward. So I need to create eight such measures. So it's exactly the replica of the previous one, but I'm subtracting two records behind. For the next one, minus three, four, five, six, seven, and eight respectively. So only thing is uh, I'm referencing eight rows behind. So once I have this, if you see this in the table here, so let me scroll to the right. So you can see I have these uh, measures here. Okay, so once I have this, this row referencing will be used to build the rules. So I'm, I'm gonna build the rules. So in this example, I have used five rules here. Rule number one, one point above the or below the three sigma, two of three above or below two sigma, and the third one being four out of five above or below one sigma, eight above or below central line, and trend six points ascending or six points descending. So these five rules. So how did I do that? So first step is rule number one is pretty straightforward, right? One point above or below three sigma. So, and that's what I have done here. When the current, uh, current failure is greater than three sigma or current failure is less than three sigma and show it as a F current. So let's try one example here. So if you see this rule, right? So let's check one item here. So if you see here 29, so in this case, so uh, the rule one is gonna hit on Jan 31st. So I have the, uh, if I scroll to the left, I have the failure, which is 29, basically, which is above my three sigma, that is upper control limit. So 28.24 is my upper control limit. So this rule gets breached. And that's why you see the value here, 29. And whenever, if there is no breach, then I'll show it as a blank. So that while I bring this particular rule into this line chart, I get only those points. And, and same thing goes for the rule two. So rule two says two of, of three above or below two sigma line. So I have used this particular function uh, to, to calculate whether there is a breach or not. So instead of writing a complex if condition, what I've done is I have I have put three condition here. First one, if it satisfies, then I'll assign one. And then again, the second uh, second function, if this gets, if it is met, then I'll mark it as one. And then the third one, if this um, uh, this particular condition gets met, then I'll mark it as one. So one, one, one. So two out of three means I'm gonna call the actual failure. And that's what you are seeing here. And this is for the lower control limit and the same thing was for the upper control limit. And then whenever two out of three that is greater than two is met, then I'll call the current failure. So for example, let's look at the rule two here. So I have a condition, a date where it, it's breaching the uh, two sigma, so 24. So if I scroll to the left here, so uh, let's let's check it out. So this is the one, right? So two out of three times. So if you see here, what is my two sigma? 22.5, so this is breaching here and here, so 29. So two out of three occurrence is breaching. And that's why I have this rule. If you see here, 24 is getting highlighted. And I've done the same thing for other uh, other rules as well, four out of five. So instead of two, I have four here. And then for the rule number four, eight above or below the central line. So if you see here, so I'm instead of uh, a sigma, I'm using the central line here, that is mean. So, and then if it is greater than your eight, or if it is for the upper control limit, if it is greater than eight, then I'll show as a current failure so that uh, that particular rule gets highlighted. And same thing applies for rule number five. So if, we, if you see here, trending. So I need to see if six points are ascending or six points descending. 
So that's what I have built here. Yeah. And once I have this uh, uh, rules set up, then what I can do is I can simply bring this rule to the uh, the line chart here. So if I scroll down here, so you can see I have the rule one, two, three, four, and five. But I have done some tweaks here. So I, I don't want this to be shown as a line. And that's the reason I have eliminated these zeros here. So if you see here, whenever the rule is not met, I have shown it as blank. So that if, if I show it as zero, then you will have a line chart. So I just need the markers. So what I've done here is, let me go to the uh, format tab here. And then under the markers, I have enabled the markers only to some of the series items. So if you see here, I have disabled the markers for the mean and for the three sigma limit, etc. I have enabled the markers only for the rules here. So if you see here, rule number one, so I have assigned the marker shape round and then the marker color uh, 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 dark blue, I would say. So whenever the rule gets preached, it gets highlighted here. Same thing applies to other rules as well. So if you see here, let me uh, do the same thing for rule two. So I've assigned the square market shape and the green color. So whenever the rule gets breached, it gets highlighted. So this is how I have uh, built the control chart along with the rules. I know this second part is uh, a little tricky because uh, bringing this rule into the control chart uh, will require like a, a little lot of effort. So, and if your business demands saying, okay, uh, we need to have this, uh, I don't know if there is any other way to do that. And if you are aware of doing this in a different way, please let me know. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop me a note in the comment section. And thanks for watching.